Let us discuss functions as first class types as well as anonymous functions in Go. We will start our discussion with anonymous functions. Um, as you can see in my present code on the screen, I have a function hello that simply prints the string hello go. Uh, and in my main function, I am calling the hello function. And in the output, I can see that hello go gets printed. Now suppose I want to convert the hello function into an anonymous function and then I would like to call that anonymous function to have the same output. How would we do that? Let's see. What I'd like to do here is I would like to change the function hello into an anonymous function first. Uh, for doing that, we will simply get rid of the call to hello inside the main function and then we will copy the entire contents of the hello function and paste that also within the main function. A little bit of formatting and next we will get rid of the name of the hello function. Yes, and there you have it, our anonymous function is ready. Now, if I try to run this piece of code, what would happen? So we see that we get an error. Func literal is evaluated but not used. Uh, so this is just like in case of variables in Go. Uh, we cannot have unused variables in a Go program. Similarly, we cannot have unused anonymous functions or function literals in Go. So what we need to do here to fix this is that we actually need to make a call to this function. And how do we make a call to a function? Uh, well, um, the method is very easy. After the function, we simply open and close a set of brackets. When I try to run this, we see that we get the exact same output as we were getting when we had declared the function hello outside of main. And here we have on screen our first anonymous function, which simply prints the string hello go. Um, can we pass arguments to an anonymous function? Well, definitely we can. Suppose I pass an argument i, which is of type integer, then I could simply print i along with hello go. And since this function takes an argument of type integer, I can pass an argument while trying to call this function. When I try to run this, we see that hello go and 10, which is the argument that we pass to this anonymous function gets printed as expected. Now, let me just clean up the extra arguments and next we will use the same function as a type. For doing that, I will also get rid of the call to this function. And as we saw in the error message, um, this much is a function literal which means that we can store this function literal in a variable. So let us call the variable f and let's give the shorthand declaration syntax and let us say that f is equal to a function that prints hello go. And how would we call the function f? Well, we simply say f round brackets open and close. When I try to run this, Yes, we see that the function f gets called on line number 15 and prints hello go. Now, let me quickly try to show you the type of the variable f as well. So if I say fmt.printf, the type of the variable f and I run this code, we see that the type of f is a function which does not take any arguments nor does it return any values. All right, uh, what happens if this function in fact takes certain arguments and we would have to use it also, otherwise the compiler will give us an error and then we pass an argument to the function as well. When we run this, we see the correct output, hello go and 10 and we see that the type of the function is a function which accepts an argument of type int. Uh, let us uh, make this function return a value as well. Uh, again, let it be of type integer and on the last line within this function, we return simply the value of zero. Uh, we could store it in a variable, but uh, really not necessary for our use case. Uh, okay, um, let us do that in fact. A uh, is equal to f of 10 and then we will print the type of A as well as the value of A. I go ahead and run this piece of code. 
Hmm. Okay, I should use the shorthand declaration syntax here. I run it and we see that we get the same output. Um, uh, we see that the variable f is a function which accepts an integer and returns an integer as well. And we can see that the return value of the function f is an integer and its value is zero as expected. Okay, so we just saw that since functions are types, we are able to store them in variables. Next, let us see that since functions are types, we can even pass them as arguments and return values to other functions. To demonstrate that, I will paste a small piece of code here and then explain it as well. Uh, so we are declaring a function called func1, which accepts a function which takes an argument and returns an integer as an argument. Uh, within this function, it makes call to the function g with an argument of type integer, in this case is 10, and it really does not uh, store the return value, nor does the function func1 return any return values. Uh, so in the main function, let us call the function func1, and we give it the argument f. Since f is also a function which accepts an integer and returns an integer as well. Uh, okay, since uh, the function func1 does not return any values, uh, we cannot have the a here like this. And let me simply comment out these lines as well, or I'll simply just get rid of them. Uh, when I run this program, okay, uh, we see that we have an output of hello go and 10. So what just happened here? Let us see. So we declared a variable f on line number 15, which is a function accepting and returning an integer. And then we passed the function f into the function func1. Now g is also a function that accepts an integer and returns an integer as well. And when we pass f as an argument to func1, g in this current context will be equal to f which means that the value of f is copied within g which means that g at this point of time would be this function we declared right here and on line number eight we are making a call to g of 10 which is in fact this function so we see the output of hello go as well as 10 being printed. And the function g would also in fact return a value which we are doing nothing with. Uh, let's in fact change that. Uh, let us store the value, return value of this function in a variable a and run this program again. Okay, it says f is undefined. I should have got rid of this. I run this program. And we see that g gives us a return value of 0, uh, which is of type integer as defined in the function f. And so as you can see, by means of this example, we are simply passing and using functions as variables. And the very last thing that I am going to discuss here is breaking down the function f from a shorthand declaration to the goes normal longer declaration. So I declare a variable f and what would be the type of f? Well, it will be a function which accepts an integer and returns an integer as well. So let me specify the type of the variable f here. And then in the next line, I will simply assign a value to the variable that I declared on line number 18. When I try to run this piece of code, we see that our output is the same as before. Since the only thing we have done is converted the shorthand variable declaration into a two-liner longer variable declaration. In fact, we could also assign the value of f in this line itself. So if I try to run this piece of code, we again see that we have the exact same output as before. And with this, we wrap up the discussion of functions as types or first class types and anonymous functions as well. 
All of the code that we just discussed has been updated in this GitHub repository, AE Dorado slash learning go. And the file name is anon underscore funks dot go. So please do check it out as well. And if you found the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please click subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon in a brand new tutorial.